So now I'll explain for the independent samples t-test, uh, how its uh, sampling distribution uh, was created. And recall that this sampling distribution was the difference between sample means. So it's a distribution, a frequency, a, distri a frequency distribution for the differences between the means. And remember for the independent samples t-test, the null hypothesis is that the two population means are the same. Also remember that it assumes that the standard deviation for the distributions for each of those uh, are the same. So when we draw the population distribution, assumed under the null hypothesis, it's individuals. And there's two completely, perfectly overlapping distributions. And their means are in the exact same place. So the standard deviation here is the pooled standard deviation and there too. So they're the same standard deviations for both of those population distributions. So to explain how the sampling distribution is created for the independent samples t-test, uh, conceptually I want to break it into, into three different parts, right? So ultimately what we're going to produce is a distribution of different scores between between the samples. So uh, the first step is going to be just to produce the different sampling distributions for the, the red and the black. From the populations. Uh, we'll, we'll put those here. Uh, the second step will be to um, calculate example different scores to get a sense how those are distributed. And we'll do that down here. And then the third thing that we would need to do is for all of the different, dif the different differences between the means, we would need to sum across those. So those are the three steps that we're going to use. So for the first step, uh, creating the sampling distributions, let's just think about the black distribution for a second and create the kind of expected sample means that we would get from there. So these are going to be our sampling distribution. And these are uh, assuming the null hypothesis is true. That's where these populations came from. And now we're just looking at expected sample means. And so this is the exact same process we went through for a single sample t-test. So for the black distribution, it's going to be almost normally shaped. It's actually a t-distribution. The mean is going to be the same. And the standard uh, error, the standard deviation, is just going to be whatever the s pool divided by the square root of the sample size. And for this example, we're sticking with the sample size is being the same for the two different groups because the math is easier. All right, so these are um, the expected sample means from the black population if the null hypothesis is true. So we can do the exact same thing for the red distribution. And it's going to perfectly overlap with the black distribution uh, because they have the same mean, the same standard deviation, and the same sample size. So now we've figured out what the kind of samples we expect from each of these populations. But what we need is the difference between two samples, because ultimately that's what our data looks like. We're going to have sample one, sample two. We're going to calculate that difference score. And we want to see how likely or really how unlikely that big of a difference in sample means is if the null hypothesis is true. So the next step that we're going to do um, is we're going to calculate some example 
uh, differences between the two different, uh, the, the means you'd get from these two different distributions. So to calculate these uh, differences between the means, an easy way to start is just to do, uh, so since we don't know the scale here, what we're going to do just for this illustration is we're going to do a, like a z-score transformation. So the mean of these distributions is going to be zero. Uh, the standard deviation will be one. And so oh, here on the edges, it would be about like that. Uh, and we'll do that for the red distribution and for the black distribution. So now we can do the math and figure out what the, the different scores would look like. So here we're going to calculate some example um, differences between the means. Um, and again, this is if the null hypothesis is true. And um, it's a sort of a sampling distribution, I guess. Although it's really not the final sampling distribution for the independent samples t-test. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But this isn't going to be individuals like it was here, right? This is differences between sample means here, differences between sample means, which is ultimately the, the kind of units we want to compare with our observed sample mean difference. Conceptually, to produce the sampling distribution for the independent samples t-test, we're going to take every, every sample mean on the black distribution and subtract every red sample mean from the red distribution. And those different scores, we're going we're to put all of them together on a single sampling distribution. That's the step three here. Uh, but to get a sense of how that would work, what we're going to do is do some example uh, differences. Uh, so for starters, since we're, we, want, we have the black x, we'll take a black x. Let's just start with the black x equals zero. Right? So that's right in the middle here. So there's a lot of black means that are there. Um, and so if for a lot of them, we're going to be, for a lot of those, the most common difference will be subtracting a red mean of zero. So you would end up there with zero. Um, and then let's consider for this black x equals zero. So we could also subtract three. So zero minus three. All right, so the black mean is zero. The red mean is three. The difference there is going to be negative three. So this distribution is going to go down to there. Um, and we're also going to want to take, a, for this exact same mean, we're going to subtract the red negative 3. So that's 0 minus a negative 3, which is the same as 0 plus 3. So that's going to be a positive 3. So for all, all of the black means of 0, the difference between the means with the red are going to be distributed like this. It was just a mirror image of the original uh, distribution. Right? But that we've only considered so far just the example means where the black mean equaled zero. So now let's shift out and we'll look at the black means that are equal to plus three. Right? So for those, when we subtract all the different red means, most of the red means are going to be 0. It's 3 minus 0 is going to be 3. So most of these are going to be centered here. Although I wish I would have drawn these a little better, but these should be lined up perfectly uh, in theory. And then we can also subtract 3 minus the black means with 3. Those are going to be 0. So our distribution is going to go over this way. And then we can also subtract 3 minus the means with negative 3. So that's going to be 3 plus 3. That's going to go all the way over to, to plus 6. And so those different scores are going to be distributed over here. Um, and if we look at, for example, the um, black x's that are negative 3, the black uh, means that are negative 3, uh, when we subtract the red means, most of the red means are 0. So that's going to be negative 3 minus 0 equals negative 3. So it's going to be centered here. If we subtract the positive 3, we get negative 3 minus positive 3. Those are going to be negative 6. So our distribution is going to go down over here. And then here we'll have our negative 3 minus negative 3, which is uh, that's the same as 3 plus 3, 0. 
So that distribution is going to be here. So these are the kinds of differences between the means that you observe. For the black means on this black distribution, only at the black means equal to plus 3, black means equal to 0, and black means equal to negative 3. Um, to actually create the final distribution of differences between the means, we need to do this, but for every possible value of, of the black value of x bar, all the x means. And most of them are going to be close to 0 here. Um, and the further away you get, there's fewer and fewer black x bars to produce these different scores. Uh, and so for this third step, summing across all of these differences, you can kind of imagine doing this with all the different black, um, all the different black means, and there being more of these distributions here towards the middle. If you sum across all those distributions, the shape is going to be something like this. It's going to be a t distribution. It's going to have a mean of zero, but because of those different scores, the standard deviation is going to be wider than it was up here. And it's the variance sum law that tells us how wide uh, this distribution is. And I, I showed you the math earlier when we went through the eight steps. Uh, but as a reminder, uh, the formula to get the um, standard error for the difference between the means, when your sample sizes are the same, is you take sample one, change it into a, the sample one standard deviation, change it into a variance, divided by the sample size for one, the same for the other sample. Um, and that gives us the total variance between the two. You add those together, but we're looking for a standard deviation, so we need to take the square root of those two variances. Um, and you can't, can't add them as standard deviations. They have to be variances. That's the trick that you need to remember to do. Um, and again, this is assuming that the sample sizes are the same. Um, in a second, I'll talk about when your sample sizes are different and how that changes the, the math for the independent samples t-test. But it's easiest to understand this test when you just assume equal sample sizes. Um, and hopefully, this gives you a better sense of how uh, that sampling distribution is created with the differences between the means and why its standard error uh, is about twice as wide as the standard error for the regular expected sample means.